listened to the first track on the album in our discussion, important moments. And I probably had a huge advantage because you were listening on headphones and I got to listen on the barefoots. First off, it's the first track on the album. And it was actually the second track that we were working on. I think, I oh, know, was it the first one? I think there was a first one, but we didn't do anything with it. We didn't, it didn't, it was not, it, it didn't make That's it. Right. To, I, I, I've, I've still got my notebook, which is a chance actually, because the, the, I tend to get rid of these production notebooks when the productions are finished, but I made sure I held on to this one because I knew we were gonna, you're quite right, well remembered. Uh, the first one was something done with bass and an iPad sequence, but we That's never right. worked with our field recording samples on it, it says in my notes here. But I think, that, was that the thing that we were working on the first night you came in? Were, there were, That's was possibly there? what it is because we didn't go out we, I'm sure we went in the studio as soon as I rocked up. I'm, I'm sure, you know, yeah. I would have said this that. track would it, we started important moments, even though I think it's late. Isn't it labeled track number three? No, it's labeled track number two. Okay. So, oh, um, no. yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. There's an important moment sketch is number two. And then yes, it's most important moments of our life was labeled number three. Okay. So something happened that we don't, right. We don't, right necessarily remember at this point but but the the track as we know it was done we started working on it after we'd done our sample day which was day the first full day um so swati can say hi uh, um and uh so this was the first like real track we were started working on right and i have kind of vague memories of it but obviously the beginning of it begins with the important moment sample which is where where the name obviously came from and that sample was derived do you remember well i'm presu i'm presuming that that came from our sketch that before we went out into the forest to do the sampling no no there was no it was in the woods when we were when i was walking back like down the path back to the car we were just like walking and I said, like, just talking with the microphone on, this is going to be one of the most important days in our life. <laughs> and you lifted that from the audio recording, obviously with no intention of it becoming anything. It was like in the midst of a conversation, you know, yeah. when we were out in the woods and, uh, yeah. and you launched it into the morphogene, I think, right? Or was it something else? And I, I think the fact that we, uh, that you said that, highlights what a special adventure it was going into the forest yeah uh, totally. you know, i mean obviously the whole the whole uh, albums are walking to the forest but it, it highlights that because we i think we both felt that it was a very special day i think the other great thing of course is your riff on the for, on the i don't know where that came from but you know that is the the big riff that that is latent in the bass sequence but appears you know we're somewhere halfway through the song or something you know that's that's uh, so great so, so that's are you talking about like the, up, the upper melody tune or the yeah you know, the upper melody tune that the song yeah. kind of finishes with you know, yeah that, well that that uh that must have been played on the prophet i think the um because most of that melodic you, stuff has been done on the prophet your your little corner your fort as as nick would say your yeah. your workstation was very much based that was conceptual as well in the way that the, the the amount of time we decided to spend together the sampling project the fact we were going to work on the grid this time the fact we were allowing overdubs yeah. the limited time length of the songs the limited track amount that all these were super important limitations and concepts i feel as was your decision to focus on your profit, which was obviously- well, that, well, we had discussed that. I remember even in your notebook, I think you had the note from like a month or two months before that I had, you know, spoken with sequential or whatever about yeah. getting the profit Excel and trying that out and kind of devoting this record as the primary instrument. Yeah, as um, your primary instrument. Which was interesting because I never played it before until, the, I don't think I had, I think I had maybe like turned it on for like five minutes before this session. No, that was just part of one of the, one of the many one of the many way markers that we set up from yeah I, but it really I, definitely was like i mean it was the the sense for me on my well it was the sense really on this record where juno 
uh, keyboard sense, like obviously the modular sense, a whole nother universe, but Juno, Prophet XL and Moog, I think. Oh, and, yeah. and the Octatrack, that's not really, that's not a synth. So, um, no, 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 no. yeah, so anyways, but it's interesting that like, no, no, there was a really limitation in instrumentation, right? It's like really was not that complicated. Um, and, uh, and, and of course, each of those are an instrument in themselves, but yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. So, so anyway, so the, and the Prophet 12, I suppose you could say, inspired whatever the combination of the, and, and, and the, the, the rhythm samples, of course, pretty much, the, it's a chronological voyage through our sampling journey, the LP, as far as I remember it. Yeah. So these, these when we're down, we're at the bottom of the hill at the moment uh, with these rhythm samples. This is probably, these samples are probably taken from our first camp that we set up. When you say bottom of the hill, you mean as we walked into the woods yeah. up on a hike up the mountain, this was like probably samples from... And actually, I remember that, that was the next thing I wanted to talk about was the rhythm samples, because listening from the first verse, as soon as those come in the rhythm and I'm thinking that is just so cool, like just the, it, the rhythms are so they sound so interestingly complex, but they're literally just us like experimenting in the forest with like whatever we found, which was mainly stone and wood. Yeah. And uh, you're like literally hearing just us playing around with these little jams in the forest. And that one's really marked a lot by, if you remember, and it was one of those early jams where I think it was, you started it, but then both of us were kind of like throwing these little rocks up against this boulder and they were like trickling down. You remember this? There's this like huge boulder and we were like throwing the rocks up and then they would like fall down and make these interesting rhythms. Like as they like, I know, remember that. Before, I, 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 and I remember earlier in the sample journey, also when we first set up, there was a rolling, because we were that, uh, at the first sampling camp we made, we were obviously a bit, we were, we were finding our feet and finding our confidence about where we were going to put the mics and things and like the kind of typical geeky stuff, which kind of later became irrelevant because later it became all about playing the stones in the woods. And we just knew it was going to work. But yeah. do you remember the, the, there was a kind of a slope where we started and there was a fence post, a metal fence post. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. I thought that was from there, but also there was rolling. The, the, the great thing, I think, that for me, the, where we broke through in this uh, was um, the idea of playing rhythms in the woods, which I know we were both very keen on rather yeah. than. We didn't go out to create individual samples. Yeah, we didn't just like drop a, a stone and like record that and then use that in no. Ableton and program then rhythms with it. I mean, there no, we, we were keen to 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 find rhythms and play yeah. together. Huh? Of like course, literally of course. The, the rhythms that we played and improvised in the woods defined kind of the rhythm rhythmic structure of the whole record. Yeah, right? they did. I, I mean, there was definitely some manipulation and changing of that as uh, creatively, like particularly in like Fox Hollow um, is when I think about it. But uh, but a lot of them are really just those like loops and stuff of us just playing really raw. And that was a big part, I think, of the early stages. Well, that was a conceptually a huge uh, hurdle to cross. Um, and we didn't let it drag us down. But I remember the choosing of the samples being a big... A, a huge task but we gradually yeah. moved through as we as we harvested samples from the session we, do you remember we we gradually found out that they were working and so we became much much quicker and much more relaxed about pulling things from the session but at the start it was obviously a huge mountain of samples we had it's amazing also right. whenever you do a sampling like project or anything like how quickly you start like heaping up data that you have to sort through you, it, and it's it's you really need barely any time to create a, a you know a, a lot of workable material i mean we had a whole day so it was more more than enough i mean actually two days again with the, the garage day but um yeah it's true and we spent that a lot of the first couple days like a few hours or like half the day like just editing samples sure and then we would set aside the time to like, okay, let's play and experiment a little bit, you know, with something. And that, that, that process 
found its own energy, didn't it? It accelerated yeah. for us. And, and, and suddenly we're pulling samples and loops and thinking, wow, this is fun. You never know if it's even going to work, right? You, you have no idea if this is just going to fall flat on its face or something fruitful is going to come, up, um, come from it. And I think we spoke about this on the last album, maybe even in the last interview, but um, that as I've matured, and I'm sure you can speak to this as well, like you learn to trust that process more and more exactly. with more experience. It's exa- I didn't want to interrupt you, but trust the process was absolutely on my lips. Yeah. That did. Also, Chris, how long have you been making records? Uh, how old am I now? So 20, uh, about 20 years. years 20, 25 years? Yeah. So, yeah. And I've been making records for like 40 years. I mean, it's not like it's, it, we, it is a couple of dudes mucking around in the woods. But yeah. it's like it's it's like sixty five seventy years of musical studio experience together. We trust yeah. the process, um, and but we learned to trust it even more, didn't we? That's all yeah. I was say. And I can, to- I mean, I think uh, looking back at it now, I mean, uh, for me, because uh, I can remember there was a period of my twenties where I had terrible writer's block for like three years, really, really like paralyzed. I just couldn't make anything. I, was, I tried so hard. I worked all day all. I couldn't complete anything. Yeah. And it was, it took me, you, you had to go through that painful experience of writer's block kind of to get to this point where you learn that the whole blocking process is like a lack of trusting yourself or what is composing yourself or whatever. And I think especially, I mean, I know you're not blocked now and I, neither of us are, are blocked creatively because we know how to sidestep it. But, but what happens when, when we work together is that we both show up. And, yeah. And, and, and I'm not going to sit in the room with you and you're not going to sit in the room with me going, oh, I haven't got any ideas. You know? Yeah. And, and something emerges. Yeah, know, totally. Which we respond to and do some more work with, you know. We both know that. We don't, you, we don't want to waste each other's time. It's very, our time's precious for us as well, because partly because we're separated by an ocean, a vast ocean. Yeah, you it's being not, in not the UK, like, me and, and uh, upstate in Catskill York. Mountains, right? It's a kind yeah. of an now or never thing when we're together yeah totally but also like in relation to that it made me like the the and and in particular i think this collaboration because i do a bunch of different ones as do you but like uh um this collaboration is so fruitful because of if there's like a lag in your own thought process or if there's a lag in your own creativity kind of the other person fills that space and then it kind of pulls you in back into it so like we're kind of like constantly pulling each other creatively forward you know um it's really yeah. it's really one of the most beautiful things about collaboration uh, that work when it works it's a, it's it's a, it's an and it's a wonderful dialogue i feel that we we we've been able to ha- to have with each other sonically creatively yeah. musically totally um, uh but but there is but this is not this is more more general philosophical stuff isn't it rather than that yeah. but still it's inspired by listening to the track and that's that's i re, you know we were listening to the track remembering oh yes the risk factor is this even going to work are we just a couple of stupid kids going into the woods with a tape recorder what are, <laughs> are we allowed to have this much fun <laughs> <laughs>